it's Mary Ann Camacho here with episode seven, covering chapter five of my new book, How Many Employees Does It Take to Change a Light Bulb? Today's session is all about habits and specifically good habits. We think of these in our personal life a lot, especially around the new year, but do we think about them in our business life? Instilling good habits in the form of operating mechanisms such as daily stand-up meetings, weekly reviews, quarterly board reviews, can lead to great results. Let me share an example. It was New Year's Eve many years ago, and I was getting ready to move to another state and take on a new job. My husband and I had enjoyed a nice dinner out, and we were headed back home when I got a call. It was the manager of this new group I would be joining. He said, I'm just calling to let you know that we've got everyone here and we'll be working through the night to get all of the service contracts booked before the year-end revenue cutoff. And I responded, wow, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for you and your team's dedication to our customers and our business. Happy New Year to you all and we'll see you in about a week when I get up there, okay? Click. I turned to my husband and said, man, I'm not sure about this new gig I just signed up for. The team is working through New Year's Eve to process all the service contracts. That is not my idea of a good time. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not averse to work. I work my tail off. I bet you do too. But yeah, 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 yeah. So what? Everybody works hard, right? I get it. I get it. My beef is this, I despise waste and working in unnecessary crisis modes. I hate seeing people being pushed to the hilt when in fact, with just a little preparation, waiting until the last minute to create a rush to the finish crisis mentality really could have been averted. And you wanna know how? Let me share the rest of the story. I took that job. Two months in, after observing all of the work and listening to the employees, I set a vision for the team to smooth out the peaks and the valleys of incoming and outgoing work, creating stable operations. I shared my visions and my expectations in an all-employee town hall. Now, the idea of creating a better working environment with Either none or much fewer midnight shifts garnered a lot of interest. Folks really wanted to be involved. I requested those who specifically wanted to be part of the change to step up, and many did. We ended up choosing one small team to go forward to be our pilot group or our model team, if you will. And then we did what I've talked about in previous episodes, We selected that team, we trained them in continuous improvement, we visualized the metrics and set a dashboard up, we instilled daily operations, stand-ups every day at the same hour, we engaged them in innovation, we listened to what their ideas are, what the ideas of the field sales team were, we got feedback and we used that constantly to create better processes. Every idea that was put forth was either summoned to be in process or dismissed, depending upon the value that it created and the impact and effort that it would have. We coached change leadership and we recognized we reward and we even promoted folks from within that team. And then we did that over and over again with other groups across the enterprise. That discipline of choosing that one small team, defining those metrics and engaging them created the largest transformation that business had ever seen. It was incredibly successful. And within the year, no one had to stay in the office until midnight again. We found a way through good habits of model teaming to stomp out constant crisis mode You can too. I can help you. Go ahead and subscribe, like this video, or even leave me feedback, or better yet, give me a call. I'd love to help you.